Hello and welcome to Jenganami. We are going to talk about rental housing today and this is an area that I specifically like because it's where investment meets need. Today we are going to go through factors that you should consider when thinking about rentals as an investment, just a general overview. And then I'll show you a case of um, a project where someone built bed sitters using precast housing. If you're thinking about doing precast housing or just any other type of housing to do rentals as a business, the first thing you need to look at is the feasibility. And this usually involves just visiting the place that you want to build, understanding the amount of demand in the area, because demand is, I think, is the most important bit about this business, because you need to make sure that whatever cost you incur when you're building, you're able to return it in a certain number of years. For most of the people like I've encountered in the business, four years is usually a good marker for them. Four to seven years for more high-end projects is also a good number, but it also depends on the kind of clientele you're looking for and the type of business that you want to do. You should note that the most common types of housing built by most landlords are one bedrooms and bed sitters due to their fast cash flow. But there are some people who also consider doing two bedrooms and three bedrooms because of just having an easier time during management. When doing the feasibility, also consider the size of land that you're going to do. So it can be 50 by 100, 100 by 100. Then from that, you can get the number of units you'd probably be able to fit in. And then you can approximate the total amount of money that you'd be able to spend on the whole project. This will normally be a rough number, but you can still use it to know how much money you will get per month. And the last thing I'd like to address on the feasibility aspect is just for people who'd like to do this business, but they do not own land in urban areas. Uh, it's always an option to actually get a lease. And there are some of these leases that are available, maybe 20 years or so. But uh, this ensures, you must ensure that you get paid in that four to seven year period. Like make sure your money is paid back. And then after that, the money you'll be earning is just profit. If you're more of a numbers person and you'd like to see a bit more spreadsheets here and there, just let me know in the comments below and I'll show you how the math works out. Once the math is good, then you get to the site. And here you need to make sure that you have, you do a lot of pre-planning before. Just do all your drawings, your BQ, your schedule of materials, and make sure everything is planned as much as you can. And also, I've noted that most landlords use their labor contracts only, where they engage their contractors on a labor-only basis, and they provide the materials that are required for the construction on demand. So you must make sure that you get all your affairs ready before you even begin the project. For the specific case that you're going to cover today, this owner had a, a, a house that was resting on a piece of land. It was in an urban area of sorts, so there was demand, and he wanted to convert that area to have bed sitters. So the first thing that was done was actually the demolition of the house that was previously there and the setting out of the houses. Setting out is usually very easy. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure you get maximum use of the land, of course, but at the same time, you try to give people something decent. The walls using precast usually go up very, very fast because it's just a matter of setting them out and propping them up. But during this stage, you need to make sure that there is a lot of safety on site because these things are very heavy and you need to just make sure that they are well held that they don't fall on anyone. Doors and windows are usually fabricated on site and this is done so that immediately the walls are up you kind of put the doors and the windows in the structure because that is also what helps it gain its strength on top of just the panels themselves and then after that you make sure that you restrain the panels on top using a channel and then trusses can come in. After the trusses we do brandering because it's easier to do brandering at this stage without the conduits are also laid at this stage because it's also easier and also the mechanical works like the piping is also done during this stage. Next step is roofing and for this you just try to keep things very simple because the simpler it is the better it is because for example for this one there's no need to cut into different shapes to make different designs. So this is how the house looks like before it's finished. As you can see on the outside there is nothing much done it's just 
the panel itself. Uh, the doors have been primed. You must make sure that they are primed so that you don't have a lot of rusts with time. But essentially, that's it for the outside. It's just waiting for the finishing touches. But the superstructure itself is complete. As you can see, the, there's the electrical outlets. They've been done very well. The plumbing outlets have been done. So they're just waiting for connection to water. As you can see, that's the sink area. For that one, usually just use masonry and concrete. Brand dyeing has been done. There's a shelf area that will be there. The floor has been done. So this is the screed which will receive the floor. The final finish will actually be a tile finish to the floor. And it's something that uh, has actually gone up in price. So the other options can also be considered. It's very important to have all your services sorted by the time you get to the stage so that you avoid reworks. For this specific site, we use the biodigester. And for this, we need to make sure that basically it's appropriately sized and to ensure maximum lake efficiency, you need to make sure that you separate the waste from the kitchen and the toilet. For the external finish, we went to the rough cast application. This is because the client was very clear that he didn't want to see the panels in the walls. So this was a nice in between. It gives a textured finish that is almost similar to rough and tough but more affordable. And this was the final look after we done that, just ready to be primed and painted. And so we started looking at different paint samples and seeing what could work with the space. The color of the day was going to be gray since we'd done the red roofing on the Mabati. <laughs> The outside was being worked on and the inside there was the skimming going on and this is one of the main benefits of of using the panel because it allows you to skip the plastering like the mortar plaster stage and go straight to this and this can be ready to can be painted for the tile choice we just went with something simple and affordable but at the same time that looked very good so this is how it looked after the surfaces have been painted and awaiting final fittings for the external finishes, the external area was going to be cupboard initially, it was red soil, and that actually is very really bad for the walls and the colors. So we did paving on the corridors, and we also did a lot of cabro works on the main parking area. This is the paint sampling, as I mentioned, the color of the day was going to be gray. The intention with the paint was just to make sure that the corridors look very light, because especially when you're doing rental housing, you don't want it to feel crowded. So with long corridors like those ones, it's easy to get to get that feeling of being crowded, but that's not what we wanted. The aim was just to give the occupiers a very safe, serene and secure compound. And I feel like this is what was achieved for this particular unit because it's so airy and breezy and green and bright with good water supply and definitely somewhere someone can live in, especially if this is the kind of house you're looking for. And some things like that actually ensure that your occupancy rate is high and less turnover, which is good for cash flow. Thank you for staying with me during this. And if you'd like more information on how to go about this or have any questions, just post them in the comments below and I'd be happy to make videos or answer them. As well as if you'd like this and you'd like to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. I'll also be covering a lot more of materials that are used on site and in construction in general. So if you'd like to know more about construction materials or different specific materials. Don't forget to ask your questions and subscribe.